Hi there. Have you ever wondered how elements actually get their names in the periodic table? Well, here is a modern periodic table and you can see that there are a total of 118 elements in the periodic table, all with the unique names. Let's pick up a few elements and see how actually elements get their names. Let's take a look at this element with the atomic number 95. The name is Americium and of course the name is based on the place of discovery which is America. Let's take a look at another element say Mercury with atomic number 80. You can see that Mercury is the name of a planet. So Mercury element is getting the name from the name of a planet. Now let's take a look at this element number 107. The name is Borium. Of course the name is coming from the name of the scientist Neil Bohr. Now it is interesting that the traditional practice of naming an element actually mostly lies in the discoverer's name. So there can be controversy because of this as well. For example, here was a controversy for element 104. Both Americans and Soviet scientists claimed credit for discovering this element 104. The naming of the new elements had been traditionally the privilege of discoverer like I said and the suggested name was then approved by IUPEC which is International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. But hey, in recent years this has led to of course a lot of controversy. The new elements with very high atomic numbers, specifically these uh, atomic numbers greater than 100 are so unstable that only minute quantities sometimes only a few atoms of them are obtained. This synthesis and characterization therefore require highly sophisticated costly equipments in labs. Such work is carried out with competitive spirit only in some labs in the world. Scientists before collecting the reliable data on the new element at times get tempted to claim for its discovery like what happened in this case of element 104 where Americans and Soviet scientists claimed credit for discovering the element 104. The Americans named it Rutherfordium, whereas Soviets named it Kurchatovium. Finally, yeah, the name that has been retained is Rutherfordium only. But nonetheless, since this whole process of naming can be very time-taking, can be very tedious and authentication can take time, there are proper rules to name the new elements and once these new elements are authenticated then only IUPEC ratifies it. So there is a proper way how we actually do the nomenclature of these elements having atomic number greater than 100. What we do is roots are put together in order of digits from 0 to 9 which makes the atomic number. What does that mean? So think of roots as the number. For example, if I talk about 100, then we have proper names for this 1, 0 and 0, which we are calling as root names. So these roots are put together in order of digits from 0 to 9, which makes the atomic number. What we do is we add EM towards the end and you will see that we will get a symbol as well corresponding to the three letters. So let's find out how we put together these roots in order of digits which make up the atomic number and how are we going to name the elements with the atomic number greater than 100. Okay, there you go. This is the table that will make your life very simple in naming any element come what may for atomic number greater than 100. You can see that we have digits from 0 to 9. Every digit corresponds to a root name. For example, for 0 we have nil, for 1 we have un, for 2 we have bi, for 3 we have tri, for 4 we have quad, for 5 we have pent, 6 hex, 7 sept, 8 oct, 9 n. And every root name has the starting alphabet which we are making use of as abbreviation. These abbreviations will be unique for every atomic number for Z greater than 100, okay? Also, let me bring your attention to these root names and draw a parallel with what we study in the organic chemistry. For organic chemistry, if you remember, we have root names there also. So, for the number of carbons, we have the root names. But they are quite different from the root names that we have for the digits here. For example, if we had one carbon, we can't have zero carbon. 
So for zero, we had nothing in organic, but the root name for one is meth. For two is eth. For three is prop. So and so and forth. There might be similar root names. There might be different root names. For example, if you see five, this pent is common. Pent we have for five carbons. We use pent in organic chemistry. That's the root name that we use. Here also it is pent. Okay. You can see hex also is common, right? But we don't have sept in organic, right? Oct is again common. We don't have n in organic. We have rather non, n-o-n. So here is an interesting thing. If you notice, none of the starting alphabets are common for two digits, right? They need to be different because we need to have different abbreviations. And like I said, abbreviations lead to the symbols. Now, let's practice it in order to understand it. Let's take, let's say, atomic number 105. For one, what did we have? The root name was un. For zero, the root name was nil. And for five, the root name was pent. So what's the name? Un, nil, pent. And what do we have to put towards the end? Eum. So that becomes the name. Un, nil, pent, eum. Okay. Now what shall be the symbol of this atomic number 105? We have to look at the abbreviations. U, N and P. So the symbol shall be U and P. And like I said, come what may, all elements with atomic number greater than 100 will have unique symbols as well as every abbreviation is unique. Now let's get some more practice of IUPIC nomenclature for elements having atomic number greater than 100. Let's begin with this one. 107. Try it on your own. We have 1 0 and 7. Now it's quite simple. For 1 we will take un. For 0, nil. For 7, sept. And then we put em towards the end, right? Let's take the first alphabets and give it the unique symbol that will be uns for the atomic number 107. Hey, try another one. Now this time you have 110. Pause the video, write it on your own and also write the symbol. Okay, hope you could do it. For 1, we are going to write un. For 1, once again, we will write un. For 0, we will write nil. And then towards the end, all we have to do is put em. Alright? So if you have to name the abbreviation u, u and n, that means the symbol shall be u, u, n. There you go. So if I say u, u, n, that means we are referring to the atomic number 110. Now the good part is this IUPIC name can be done for any future elements also. Let's take a hypothetical element with atomic number 135. You can pause the video and try attempting IUPIC name and symbol of this future element which is not yet discovered. Hope you could do it. For one, we can write un. For three, we can write try. For five, we can write pent. And then we have to add em. So that becomes the name. Un, try, pent, em. So what shall be the symbol? UTP. UTP becomes the symbol of this hypothetical element 135, right? Okay, now let's do opposite, okay? I'll give you the symbol and you tell me the atomic number and its IUPAC name. All right, I mean, it's very interesting. It's just like a game. So you know that U is for un, N is for nil, and Q is for quad, and then we write EM. So that's the IUPAC name. U is for one, N is for zero, and Q is for 4. So here is that element that we were referring to, 104, which led to a controversy. But now, with this IUPIC name, things are simple and gamified. Do try for as many elements as you want for atomic number greater than 100.